Press. Almighty God, who in thy wisdom and goodness has appointed the offices and rulers of parliament for the welfare of society and just government of men, we beseech thee to behold with thy abundant favor us thy servants whom thou hast been pleased to call to the performance of important trust in this land. Let thy blessings descend upon us here in this house assembled. Grant us that we may treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful a manner. To promote thy honor and glory, to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of this country and of those whose interests thou hast committed to our charge. Amen. Correction and approval of records of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Wednesday, 13th December 2023. Correction and approval of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Wednesday, 13th December 2023 is before us for correction and approval. Can any honorable member please move that the said record of votes and proceedings be considered and approved? Before that, I would like to also welcome His Excellency the Vice President, uh, Mr. Mohammed Piazjala, who is here with us today to attend to his business. Member for Jimara. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'd like to move. Uh, that the said record of votes and proceedings of National Assembly sitting on Wednesday, 13 December 2023, for consideration. Thank you. Any second, member for Kiang Central. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I rise to second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Wednesday, 13 December 2023, be approved. Any correction or observation from honorable members may do so by so of tack. We will proceed to look at the record uh, beginning with page one. We look at the record page by page, beginning with page one. Any observation or issue on page one? Member for Bacow. Uh, the assembly conveyed at, at is missing at 15 minutes after 11. Uh -oh. Yes, member for Bacow. The, co the assembly conveyed at at its meeting. Okay, uh, first line. Yes, as the first, at, yeah. Assembly convened at he wanted to insert at 50 minutes after 11 o'clock in the morning. Prayers were read and the honourable. Okay. Any order on page one? Let's move to page two. Page two. Uh, member for Kiang Central on page two. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, I was present on Wednesday, but I'm seeing my name on the absent with permission. I was not absent on that day. Honorable members, he was present, but his name is written as absent with permission, and he is not ready to be generous to us. Please, table office, expunge his name from those absent with permission to those absent, to those present. Any order on page two? Now let's move to page three. Member for Wooly is. Yes, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, if you go to question number 
427 is saying, Honorable Member Kian Central, uh, the four is missing. Honorable Member for Kian Central. And wherever it is. It yeah. appears. Honorable Members, on question number 427 of 2023, by the Honorable Member Kiang Central is to read by the Honorable Member for Kiang Central. FOR is missing. Any order? Member for Jara Central. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. On the page three, question for oral answers. Question number one. The following questions and number of supplementary questions were asked and answered by the Honorable Minister for Fisheries and Water Resources not resource. So we should include as we should add as there. Yes, on resource, it should be resources. And after that, it should end with a colon. And wherever it appears. Thank you. Any order on page three? Can we move to page four? Member for Nyamina West. Thank you very much, Speaker. Um, that is number two, question 3A2, um, said 3A2, my honorable member for Busimbala, where you have was asked on his behalf by the honorable member for Talinding Kunjang and treated with savings. So for consistency... Question, for question number three, what? 3A2, number two. No, we don't have 3A2. Page four. Yes, page four. We are in page three. I am in page four, according to my page. Question number 3A2. 3A2, number two, according to my own verse. No. No, we don't have question number 3A2. Huh? Any order on page four? Yes, member for Jara Central. Honorable uh, Speaker, on page four, um, number two, the following question and number of supplementary questions were asked and answered by His Excellency the Vice President. Let's omit the D. There is article D there. By His Excellency, the Vice President. Yes. And we leave the, we, we, we delete the, the Article D. Yeah, the Article D should be after His. Yes. After His Excellency. Yes. Yeah. The Article D should be deleted. Yeah. Answered by, it should be by His Excellency, the Vice President. Yes. Instead of by the His Excellency. Any order? Banjul not. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Page four. Um, question number 302 of 2023 by the Honorable Member for Latikunda Sabiji was asked on his behalf by the Honorable Member for Talinding Kunjang and answered, generated, answered and generated six supplementary questions which were answered. I don't think this was the case because if I can remember, the member for Talinding Kunjang decided to withdraw from asking a supplementary question when a lot of point of orders were, you know, coming helter and skelter. Order, yes, um, but some other honorable members also ask supplementary questions. Here, in this instance... I know, but he decided to withdraw because when he asked the question, there were a lot of, you know, point yeah. of orders. Then we ask him to withdraw the question, the supplementary question. Yes. Um, yes, you know, but um, um, some other members also had the opportunity to ask some supplementary questions. Yes. No, 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 you know, he asked one supplementary question plus five supplementary questions. That made it six. The order, his last supplementary question, he withdrew that one. Any order on page four? 
page 5 can we move to page 5 page 6 page 7 oh there's no page 6 <laughs> Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the record of votes and proceeding of the National Assembly sitting of Wednesday, 13 December 2023, be approved with amendment. Those in favor, please say aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Clerk, we may proceed, please. Minister's reply, order 100. Minister's reply to the report of the National Assembly Standing Committee on Finance and Econ Public Accounts Committee on the 2019 Audited Accounts of Government Auditor General's Report on COVID-19 Response Phase 2, Annual Activity Report and Audited Financial Statement of Public Agencies and Institutions Area and Municipal Councils by His Excellency the Vice President. Was the Honorable Minister for Finance and Economic Affairs and the Honorable Minister for Lands and Regional Government. Honorable Members, after the adoption of the report of the National Assembly Standing Committee on Finance and Public Account Committee on the 2019 Audited Accounts of the Government, the Auditor General's report on COVID-19 response phase two, annual activity reports and audited financial statement of public agencies, institutions, area and municipal council in the previous session, the report was submitted to the government, in particular, His Excellency, the Vice President, Honorable Minister for Finance and Economic Affairs, and the Honorable Minister for Lands and Regional Government for consideration and reply as per order 100 of the standing orders of the National Assembly. Accordingly, His Excellency, the Vice President, and the said Honorable Ministers are scheduled today for reply to the report. May I now invite His Excellency the Vice President to proceed and take to the podium and make his statement. Your Excellency the Vice President. Honorable Speaker, first of all, good morning. Um, I want to wish, I wish to inform this August body that uh, yes, we have received the report and also to inform you that the government has taken the report very seriously. And um, last week, I also informed you that we had also given the report to the Inspector General of Police who have already started the investigation, but we are yet to um, get the response from the Inspector General of Police. We are also want to inform you that my office is also compiling the responses from the other, other sectors of, of the government to have a compendium which we will now forward to, to your office in, in due course. Thank you very much. Honorable members, we've been informed by His Excellency the Vice President that following the submission of the audit report that his office have in fact instructed the Office of the Inspector General of Police to take action and investigate the matter as well as also he has instructed uh, various ministries and departments concerned to submit a reply to his office to be compiled and uh, presented to this August Assembly and he, he, they will come back to us another day. Um, honorable members, on that note, on your behalf, I want to thank His Excellency the Vice President and reiterate the National Assembly's commitment for him to follow uh, the audited report and take it very seriously for the interests of this nation. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, we want to thank you sincerely for always uh, answering to the call of the National Assembly in the service of our nation. Thank you very much. You may go.
I, I am not so um, whether His Excellency want to. Um, I'm not sure if His Excellency want to probably hear uh, updates from the chair of the FPAC. At, at this instant, maybe the, the chair of FPAC can maybe chair, chair of FPAC. I think you also need time, maybe next session, to come back to Parliament. Is that so? The chair of FPAC also want to be given more time. So uh, on that note, I want to thank His Excellency, the Vice President. Your Excellency, you are released. You may go. Clark, we may proceed. Clark, we may proceed. Order, order, please, honorable members, order. Order 74, reconsideration state of clauses 2 and 75 of the Anti-Corruption Bill 2023 by the Honorable Attorney General and Minister for Justice. Honorable members will recall that precisely on Tuesday, 19 September 2023, the ABC scheduled the third reading of the Anti-Corruption Bill 2023 during proceedings of the third reading of the said bill. The Honorable Deputy Speaker and the Honorable Minority Leader and Member for the Commonwealth moved motions for the reconsideration of the bill under the provision of Orders Clause 53H and 74 of the Standing Orders. Honorable Members, the motions were agreed and the bill stood referred to the ABC to schedule the reconsideration stage of the Anti-Corruption Bill 2023. Now today is appointed for the reconsideration stage of Clause 2 and 75 of the bill in accordance with the Standing Orders 72 and 74. During the reconsideration stage, members shall have the opportunity to give detailed consideration and scrutiny in respect to only clauses 2 and 75 of the bill. 
This stage also provides an opportunity for amendments to the bill to be debated and voted on. I will now therefore dissolve the Assembly into Committee of the whole Assembly to reconsider the Anti-Corruption Bill 2023. The Assembly now dissolves into Committee of the whole Assembly. Clark. Um, clause two, interpretation. Majority Leader, yes. Clause two. It is proposed that clause two, interpretation, be deleted. And wherever it appears, those in favour, please say. Oh, no, 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 You cannot just do it that way. What's wrong with you? Who brought that proposal for it to be deleted? Chair, yeah, can I be guided? No. Um, sorry. It is proposed that on due advantage. On due. You've already raised it. Let's make our comments. Let me see. On the interpretation. You know, it's the interpretation. On the party. interpretation, that's page seven. On due advantage. It is proposed that on the clause two. Interpret. I will chair. Remember for Nyanija? Yes, what I what I observe here, it's like the word on you advantage, that's the proposal to delete that and wherever it appears. But in my understanding, if you would delete that on you advantage, there are so much clauses after it, sub clauses rather, from A to L. So if you delete and it will affect the entire this. To me, I think it is better we leave it as it is, as far as it's just for interpretation.
Busumbala? This, this undue influence here is the bone of this bill. When we remove it, definitely it cannot stand. Yeah? Just look at the... Yes. Undue... Um, Chair, can I be guided? Uh, Chair, is it undue influence or undue advantage? Which is which? Undue advantage. Thank you. For the records, I think it's important we get that noted. Member for Pasalum. Yes, um, Chair, I think if we, if we have to delete this one, it's going to affect clause 20, clause 31, clause 32, clause 35, clause 36, clause 38, clause 41, clause 57, and uh, it's also going to affect clause 63. In fact, it's going to affect a lot about this bill. So, so I think it's better we leave it the way it is, yeah. Yeah, if it's 75 as well, yeah. Mm. Yes, member for Banjul Central. Yeah. Banjul South. Banjul South. As the mover of the motion, I think we would like to hear the rationale behind because in what like honorable member for Upper Salum said, and I think we have also observed that it will affect a lot of clauses, but we will still like to hear the reason behind you moving the motion. I, I am no speaker today. I am not a speaker. I am a chair, so I can participate like any other member. In fact, I can even vote with a casting vote. <laughs> no, no. Chair, now you can justify it. Please, don't use your mic like that, please. Take, uh, please request the mic first.
Chair, what I want to say is that uh, order. We are having a meeting, you people. Huh? Samba. Order, order, please. No, I'm saying uh, if you look at this, this is this is the uh, evidence evidence area. What I want to say. In fact, uh, the member for Woolley East talks about evidence. When you look at undue advantage, its definition, if you look at it, in fact, it's going to create more problems than even solving problems. Read the definition. This is, in fact, it's against our culture and traditions as a whole, as a country, as Muslims, Christians, and Africans. Just, just read the definition. You know, when we are making laws, we are making laws for posterity and for our people. We are not making laws to, with the sole objective of wrecking society, of wrecking tradition, of wrecking culture, of wrecking religion. And this undue advantage seeks to do that. It's against our culture, against our tradition, against our religion. Chair. Yes, yes. Chair, you see, all this, this whole book, if you want to examine it very well, it will, it will go against a lot of our culture and, and tradition. We are here to create a situation where, you know, the taxpayers' money will be safeguarded to eradicate corruption. That is the objective of this. Let's look at it from, from that context. But if you go to, you want to make a law and you want to consider culture and tradition, you are not likely to make law because those are the old things. Now we are, we are, this is modern day. So you have to make law to modify culture, to make culture better. That's what we are trying to do here. You see, so the, don't use the, the culture dimension to dilute the law. Chair. You see, you see um, the greatest enemy of Africa nowadays is a determination to abandon what and who we are as men and people of culture, tradition, and religion. That is why when we make laws, we more or less render sometimes our states or institutions ungovernable and unfunctionable. Because of the type of laws that we made, you cannot find them anywhere. And in fact, this kind of anti-corruption piece of legislation you find in the, we want to enact now, please, please. This kind of anti-corruption you want to legislate here, you cannot find it anywhere, even in the developed countries. Okay. Yes, member for uh, Kantora and Majority Yeah, leader. Um, to look at the undue advantage. I think uh, what we can do, because it's too broad in the sense that it says, let's look at it critically. It says undue advantage includes any gift, loan, and or if you go to E also, donation, gift, loan, reward, I mean, I mean, E, yeah, E. Yes. Now, look at, look at, look at A, gift, loan, and fees. How can you say loan is an undue, giving loan is an, is, a, is an undue advantage? To give loan. Yes. No, I think we can, we can modify to uh, exclude the loan and gift in this concept. To, yes. Gift. Yes. Um, the majority leader is saying we exclude gift, donation, loans, rewards. Out of, the member for Sabah Sanjal, then from the Aloha, Opasalu. Sabah Sanjal, then Opasalu. Yes, um, Chair. I'm with the opinion that we shouldn't remove this undue advantage. We might look at it and maybe there are certain clauses we may remove from it. But to, to just delete it at all, I think it will definitely harm the purpose of this bill. So to me, there are certain things that we just need to look at which does not fit in our society and then we delete them. But just to delete the undue advantage like that, definitely, it will defeat the purpose of the bill. Thank you. Honorable members, you had the member for Sabah Sanjal. 
He has a problem with some part of the, the definition, and then we should delete those, and probably uh, maybe the majority leader earlier on proposed to, 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 to amend the definition. That's what also the member for Sabah Sanjal. Yes, Opasalum, you have the floor. Yes, um, uh, I, I think no, we just... No, not Upper Salum, Lower Salum. So then after I come. Yeah, it's Lower Salum. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, you know, we can't make laws that will favor the entire communities. You understand? Most of them, they must be in a disadvantage. You understand? And the minister is here also. Now, we are making these laws to make a progressive laws. We allow the minister also to intervene in this issue. But if you want to delete this thing, means let's not even make this um, bill to be passed. Because you can see the, what the majority wants to um, delete. <laughs> gift, loans, fees, award. Those, the possession of giving it out. It will come soon, is yes. That is why it looks like members are getting more confused on this. Because the definition is too wide, too big. Nominated member Kebalang Fofana, you have the floor. Then from there to Banjul South. Uh, Mr. Honorable Chairman, I think uh, if we are talking about anti-corruption, this is the genesis. Because on due advantage, based on what I've read from A to L, it's about giving an individual an edge over others because of offering something. So, and then in its various forms, that's why we have them as subsection A going down up to L. So if we delete this entire clause, we are in effect paralyzing the act that we intend to make. So I will be with the op opinion of, okay, let's go to it. We look at it progressively, progressively. And what we believe will add value to the work we are trying to do, we leave that in. But to delete it, we might as well forget about the act because this is the genesis of the act itself. Yeah. Banjul South. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I've sent, a rec I've sent a recommendation. Instead of includes any, because any means everything, I've, I've, um, I suggested include certain. That would certify. So it means that gift, loan, might, you might have gift or loan, and if it is acquired the right way, after it has been certified, then it will not fall under this. So I recommend that to change, include certain and then listed below. Uh, Banjir Saud is proposing, instead of deleting, uh, but we say we delete the word any and include certain, then we highlight the things that we want to include. Uh, but the member for Upper Salum, then Banjul not. Yes. Um, the, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I think if you, if you look at the, the bill critically, I, I don't think somebody will be charged for giving out the gift without a probable cause. The probable cause is there are reasonable grounds for somebody to be arrested, for somebody to be detained, for somebody to be charged. There must be some reason. You cannot just come because of Sidinja has a naming ceremony. I go and give you Sidinja some kind of gift and I'm charged for what? There must be some probable cause that there is something between you and me as a business or something. That's what the bill is trying to talk about. So that's, if there is no probable cause, be rest assured there is nothing would happen, happen to anybody. Chair. Member for Banjul not, then uh, Joshua, uh, Nyanija, and Sabasanya, then we close. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, for me, what I wanted to say is what the member for Upper Salem have just said. To be honest, um, the issue of the undue advantage is very important as far as this bill is concerned. And remember, we are here to make or to enact laws that are progressive. And if we take out this particular clause, to be honest, um, we are not making any progressive law here. Thank you. Um, Sabasanja. No, you said Joshua, not Sabasanja. Joshua, go ahead. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Chair. Yeah. I think, Chair, yeah, we need to look at the, the clauses very well. because, the, And then we also look at the, the main cause of why this is coming up. Who are we giving at? Why are we giving out? Because when it comes to gift issue, there is a reason why you are giving out. Let's look at, let's follow the end point of it. What is the intention? 
Because everything goes to, 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 to court. They don't just come and say, yes, you give it out something, and then you are charged for this. It must go through the, through the right procedures. They, they, they charge you, take you to court, and then you, you defend yourself. So what I'm saying, by deleting this, it's like we giving out, taking out zero with regards to, 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 to the bill. So I'm suggesting that we still maintain it as it is, and then move ahead. Yes, Chair. I, uh, in fact, I'm being made to understand on due advantage deals with Section 37, the previous one, and it has been deleted. You remember we deleted it, that section. Uh, I'm just... So now, uh, Member for Nyanija, so therefore no, it's more or less redundant. Chair, you... Chair, then Sabastanjal. Nyanija, you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I am with the opinion that probably we hear from the Attorney General too. Yeah, because to me, to me, deleting it will definitely have some consequential effects in it. But I am also convinced after hearing from members that it is necessary to look at some of the sub clauses under it, maybe we refine some of them. But I am with the opinion that we hear from the Attorney General. Yes. <laughs> Chair. No, I said Sabasanja last, then we'll go to majority leader, then the Attorney General. Sabasanja. Yes, Chair. Um, um, my concern is about the suggestion that was raised that we put a word certain. Certain is ve to me is very vague, you know, and you are giving the court a big burden to decide what is certain and what is uncertain. So I think we need to be specific when making laws. Thank you. Well, you know, there is any. She said any is, to her, any can be open-ended. Maybe she thought certain is closer. That's what she said. But uh, the, the, the majority leader was proposing something. But earlier on, as I said, yes. it so, came uh, to notice uh, that yes. Session 37 Listening to needed. members of parliament, this is about lawmaking. And we need not to kill the spirit of the, the very thing we want to address in society. Probably the gift might be seen a culture, but we can still uh, make law to address it. We are looking at the action, but the intent of giving. And also the loan also, on what ground are you giving the loan? I think those need to be regulated. I think, uh, uh, Chair, let's leave it as it is. Yes, I withdraw. Honorable members, as I said earlier on, we, we, we have been informed that it addresses section 37 and that has been deleted. No, no. Oh. Honourable members, yes, so we've withdrawn that motion, so we move to the next. Section 75. No. This one is withdrawn. 75. It is proposed that uh, close to on interpretation uh, on due advantage stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. That is have it. Clerk. Clause 75, prosecution of offenses. Honorable members, uh, we'll now allow the mover of that motion to lead us. You may recall clause 75 was deleted, but the minority leader and member for Bill Kamanot moved a motion for it to be uh, reinstated. Yes. No, prosecution of offenses. What is that? Yeah, uh, on rebel care. Prosecution of? 
offenses. Yes. Old version. 76 in the old version and 75 in the clean copy. Yes. Yes, honorable care. Upon consultation, then we came to realize that the recommendation by the committee still be maintained, and that is to say, on 76.1, which reads, every prosecution for an offense under this act or any other law prohibiting bribery, corruption, and other related offenses shall be done with the consent of the Attorney General. We propose that we change the word shall to me. And also to, with the consent of the Attorney General to, in consultation with the Attorney General. That is simple submission. Yeah, we said it is not, that is not in contravention with the Constitution because in the Constitution there is room. Not all cases call for the consent of the Attorney General. No, I'm coming. Yeah, the close. Uh, honorable members, no, no. the proposal is like to reinstate what has been deleted by this team. That's his proposal. So we had him. Now the floor is open for three or four people, then we vote. Chair. All right, no problem. Honorable members, the floor is open. Minority, your mic. Hmm? Honorable members, then now we will vote. Ah, because no, the floor is open, nobody raises or attack. The proposal is. I, 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 I opened the floor, but nobody. No, I, I did. I Majority did. leader, please. Yes. You have the floor. What I'm saying, you know, these people are directly under the Attorney General. Why would you say the inconsistency? It should be mandatory. They have to, in concert with, with, with the Attorney General, and also it should be sal, not may. It has to be mandatory. Thank you. In fact, I remember during the consultation stage, I also made similar submissions and the contribution that it cannot be in the absence of the Attorney General. Yeah, member for Woolies. I'm saying since uh, the, the criminal act code itself, uh, whatever crimes like this, uh, you is it with the consent of the Attorney General? So I believe that uh, the shall there. So it's is, constitutional is okay. provision. It's okay. Yeah, we can maintain it as shall. It's constitutional provision. I, I highlighted during the debate and during the consultation stage. Let's vote. <clears throat> Honorable members, the, now because we are going to vote, the proposal is for its, uh, the, his proposal to be included. Those in favor will say aye. Sorry. Use your mic. This is a constitutional provision. Read the provision of the constitution. No, no. No. Honorable uh, Chair. No. Yes, I'm a member for Chair. No, 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 no. Wait. I'm giving the floor only to the member for Nyamin Danku. Then we'll vote. Honorable uh, uh, No. Honorable Chair, we have the Attorney General in our meet. And the reason why is here, if there is any issues that fall within the two parties, he will intercept so that at least he gives us more room or more explanation what he, on what we are giving before we vote. This is why he is here. Okay. Let's give him chance at least to, um, to, yeah. to, to elaborate. Please, no, don't use your mic. Um, um, our senior member, the member for Nyamina Dangunku, thank you for that uh, contribution. Uh, I'm not sure if you were here, it was a heated debate and the Attorney General uh, uh, came on board and told us and in fact uh, uh, the, the constitutional provision was read at the time but because of your this also wise word intervention, I will still allow him to, to say something then we vote. Before you allow him, can you allow members to also say something if they have anything to say please? I think it's important. No, no. You share our views. No, 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 you know I... Uh, 
Ali in fact when I opened the floor, but none of you was ready to No 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 don't use your mic. No 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 don't use your mic. Okay, I will allow the Attorney General please. But oh, before the Attorney General, um the people really is like you also want to take the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right then Sabah Sanjal take the floor. Thank you. I think, um, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Chair, I think this is important that we, we leave it as it is. Um, the reason is uh, um, because this has to do with um, criminal offenses. And according to the Criminal Code of Conduct, um, it is only the um, Attorney General who is given the powers to grant nolle prosecute. So for that being the case, before wasting state resources to go ahead with issues, that might be end up, you know, where we have a situation where the Attorney General, Attorney General have to, to grant nolle prosecute. I think it is important that we just, you know, leave those powers to him. I think it's important. Member for Opposite. Attorney General, I mean. Yes, um, thank, th you. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yes. You know, you know normally, this, this is my recommendation that we just read, but normally I don't, I don't go against my own recommendation. But looking at the Constitution, Section 85, um, on the issues dealing with control of prosecutions, um, I would like to read it, Section 1. The Director of Public Prosecution shall have power in any case in which he or she consider it desirable to do so and subject to the approval of the Attorney General. Sal. Then if you go to B, to initiate and undertake criminal proceedings, B, to take over and continue, C, to discontinue, and you continue. So it seems that based on the current laws we have, the Attorney General actually has control over prosecution. So I'm going to go against my own recommendation for the first time that we leave it the way it is. Thank you. You know, honorable members, it's just a reminder. It was read here. We said it here. The Attorney General came in. In fact, but I will now give the floor to the Attorney General and Minister for Justice. Thank you. Please. Thank you very much. Um, honorable Mbo said it, 85 of the Constitution. But I, I wanted to allay the fears of those who might think, assuming and assume, at the particular Attorney General is involved in any corrupt practices. The, the, the practices, the person, once investigations conclude that you are implicated, you are removed. Yes. So there will be another Attorney General that will authorize your prosecution. So you will not be sitting there to refuse to recommend your own prosecution. Any, you know, conscionable government, if a minister is investigated and evidence is, is pointing to the fact that that minister is implicated, you are removed. So that fear of, because I remember in the debate some people were concerned, how about if the Attorney General himself is suspected of a corrupt practice? He'll be removed from office. And then naturally there'll be another AG that will authorize for his prosecution. So that, that fear is allayed. Other than that, currently, whether you put it in this legislation or not, the Attorney General have a constitutional power and he's in charge of the prosecution policy of the country. He can take over any trial and discontinue it at will. Yes. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, the proposal is that... The proposal is that... The chair has withdrawn. <laughs> oh, have you withdrawn? Your vice chair has withdrawn, so withdraw. When your committee members say you withdraw, it is proposed. No matter what you are Chairman, I think I'm also a member of FPAC. And we do not want to set precedents. Since the Constitution supersedes all other laws, we will just urge our chairman to withdraw this one so that we continue. If chairman, not, it will force chairman, members to go to... against our own resolution. We don't want to do that. Chairman, you were in order, but since we've been proven otherwise, then let's just accept you withdraw. Otherwise, members will go against our own recommendation, which is not good. Uh, it was the member, developed, before, this recommendation was developed based on consultation, and it was based on that agreement that we call for reconsideration, we submit. And therefore, on that ground, I'm not withdrawing. Let the committee decide. Uh, let's vote. Let's vote. Let's vote. Don't entertain this. Honorable members, lower salon school is. No, but honorable minority leader. And I also Sabasanya. You see? No, the issue is honorable chair. The minority here is not here to um, make decisions. And we will not allow him to withdraw it. 
make a vote, we post because already we, we have listened to the uh, minister. If Police. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I believe that the minority leader will eventually be through because if, if you look at one, you know, the, whether it's the Constitution or the uh, Criminal Procedure Bill or this act, the Attorney General, when it comes to criminal activities, must give consent. But there are underlying reasons why that should happen. Because some of them are, there are many reasons why the Attorney General must, must Thank consent you. to it. Thank you. <coughs> so, Honorable members, the proposal is that, Honorable members, it is proposed that Clause 75 uh, re, 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 reintroduce and stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 On, on, honorable members, now what the question I am reading is to reinstate the proposal from minority leader. Oh, I want to explain to you so that you know where to vote. The proposal is to, to, to introduce the No, no, no. Uh, can you say it properly? We want to listen. Chair, Honorable Chairman. Chair, can I? You are putting a proposal made by the minority leader on clause 75 to amend one and two. Those? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, 75, one and two. Please, honorable members, no, 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 please, please. What we are voting for is his proposal to stand part of the bill. Those. Honorable members, you know, he is the one that proposed. What I'm going to read is his proposal. If you support him, you say yeah. If you don't support him, you say no. The proposal is that the proposal from the member for Brikama South and Brikama North and Minority Leader to stand part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. 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 The no's have it. Chairman, they are calling for division. Honorable members, the consideration stage is now completed. The ABC appointed the third reading of the Anti-Corruption Bill 2023 on Thursday, 21st December 2023. Before this date, the Honorable Attorney General and Minister for Justice's Office and the Office of the Clerk in accordance with Standing Order 7220 should print again the amended version of the bill for circulation to members before the third reading. 
The assembly now resumes. Honourable members, the House resumes. Honourable members, as communicated earlier at the consideration stage, the third reading of the Anti-Corruption Bill 2023 is now scheduled for Thursday, 21st December 2023, for the Honourable Attorney General and Minister for Justice to move for its third reading. However, before this date, the Office of the Honorable Attorney General and Minister for Justice are hereby urged to comply with Standing Order 7220 to ensure that the amended version of the bill is printed and circulated to members in advance. Thank you. Clerk, we may move. Bill Order 72, Consideration Stage of the Animal Health Bill 2023 by Honorable Minister for Agriculture. Honourable members will recall that after the second reading stage, the bill automatically stood referred to the ABC. Therefore, the bill is appointed today for the consideration stage in accordance with Order 72. During the consideration stage, members shall have the opportunity to give detailed consideration and scrutiny to every clause and schedule in the bills. This stage also provides the first opportunity for amendments to the bill to be debated and voted on. I will now therefore resolve the assembly into committee of the whole assembly to give consideration to the bill, that is the Animal Health Bill 2023. The assembly now resolve into committee of the whole assembly. Honourable members, as Honourable members, the Assembly will now go into the Committee of the Whole Assembly to consider the Animal Health Bill 2023 close by close. We will be guided by Order 72 of the Standing Orders during the consideration stage. Clerk? Clause 1, subtitle. It is proposed that Clause 1, subtitle, a member for Wuli is? The, the committee should be leading us, but the subtitle. Sorry, um, yes. We, uh, have, we yes. have no proposal for the subtitle. Yes, instead of bill, it should be act. 
So hmm? the chair for agriculture Animal health health act 2023. You've seen ah, it. Chief, can you put off your mic? The, who is leading us? The health chair or the agriculture chair? Huh? Member for Panyomi and Chair, are you with us? He is not. The Chairman for Health, are you with us? Yeah, yeah can you lead us? Yeah. It's not yet at The Member for Wuli is, what's your proposal? On the I'm saying the recommendation for the subtitle is Animal Health Bill. And I'm saying, uh, since we have read this text now, we are going to say Animal Health Act 2023. Instead of 2020? Instead of, instead of bill, we will say act. The act is entitled Animal Health Act 2020. No, naturally it will be called Act 2020. Yes. It should be 2020. I thought you wanted to change the, the year instead of 2020 to 2020, because that's 2020. Yes. It will naturally be act if it's passed. You know, when it passed, it will naturally be act. So. Can I come in? Mm -hmm. Honorable Chair. Chair, yes. Yes. If you look at the committee's report, as we recommended, the committee recommends that this subtitle be read as Animal Health Bill 2023. Yes. 2023 instead of 2020. Yes. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Hmm? Yes, when it passed also, it will be, before they sign it, it will be 2023. But it is proposed that clause one, subtitle, stands part of the bill as amended. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. That is have it. Clause two, interpretation. Clause two, interpretation. Anything, Chair? No. No. It is proposed that clause two, Interpretation stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Clause three, application. Honorable members, clause three, application. No amendment. It is proposed that clause three, application, stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The eyes have it. Clause 4, administration of the act. Clause 4, administration of the act. Chair? It is... No, I have to put the correction. Clause by clause. It is proposed that clause for administration of the act stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. Those not in favor, please say no. That is have it. Clause five, powers of the veterinary services. Clause five, powers of the veterinary services stand. It is proposed that clause five, powers of the veterinary services stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. Does not in favor, please say no. The eyes have it. Clause six, residual powers of the veterinary services. Clause six, residual powers of the veterinary services. It is proposed that clause six, residual powers of the veterinary services stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The eyes have it. Clause 7, exercise of powers by the head of the veterinary services. Clause 7, exercise of powers by the head of the veterinary services. It is proposed that Clause 7, exercise of powers by the head of the veterinary services stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it.
Clause 8, Head of the Veterinary Services to advise the Minister. Clause 8, Head of the Veterinary Services to advise the Minister. It is proposed that Clause 8, Head of the Veterinary Services to advise the Minister, stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Clause 9, designation of authorized officers. Clause 9, designation of authorized officers. It is proposed that Clause 9, designation of authorized officers, stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Clause 10, functions of authorized officers. Clause 10, functions of authorized officers. It is proposed that Clause 10, functions of authorized officers, stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Clause 11, declaration of quarantine. Part 3, quarantine measures. Clause 11, declaration of quarantine. It is proposed that Clause 11, declaration of quarantine stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Clause 12, duties of owners or persons in charge of animals. Clause 12, Chair. I th think yeah, we have, we have, Honourable Minister, I have a proposal for... Honourable Minister, Clause uh, 12, do you have anything? Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, duties of owners or persons in charge of animals. It says, um, a person who owns or has in his or her possession custody, control, or charge of an infected with a noticeable disease, sal. It's a, I, yes, but um, A to D applies, but under 12, 2, under 12, sub 2, a person who contravenes subsection 1 commits an offense and is liable to a, on conviction, to a fine of not less than $5,000 and no more than $100,000 or imprisonment of six months or maximum of 12 months. In our candid opinion, we think leaving it open to 100,000 is going to be really harsh on the majority of the animal owners. And the offenses here are not likely to happen if farmers are well educated, but we think fine not more than 10,000 is a reasonable amount instead of $100,000. Okay. And but also, if you, Honorable Minister, you want to reduce only the fine. You, you have, you look at the imprisonment. It's a not less, <clears throat> not less than six months imprisonment. Yes, and in my proposal is to <coughs> because, reduce the fine to 10,000 and no imprisonment. They, let them just have the option of a fine, but not to imprison the hard owners, especially for an offense of this nature. What the Honorable Minister is saying, because this thing, you know, most of the owners of herds or cattle, uh, uh, most of them are in the rural, in provincial Gambia, and they may not offer very well. Some of these things may happen not to provide their knowledge that even some of their uh, uh, sheep or goats uh, are infected with something. So he may, he's not, he, 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 he is uh, opposed to stricter measures on those things. Yes, Chair? Honorable care. I think Honorable Minister's proposal is really genuine. We can remove the imprisonment part of it, but like, even though that ten thousand dollars is the, the upper one, we can increase it a bit because depending on the gravity of the crime the individual commits and the damage it has made to the to the to the, to the surrounding, we have to put that also into consideration. Thank you, Sabasanja. Yes, Chair. Uh, I'm with the opinion that most of these local um, farmers and who or, 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 or cattle rearers sometimes find it very difficult before they have access to these veterinary services because there is always high demand. So in the event that 
you know, something happens to their animals before they notice it. You know, if, a, if they are rather unfortunate that a veterinary service man might set eye on that and, you know, and you, you, you imprison them just because of that, I don't think that's a, that's a very good thing. So to me, the imprisonment should be removed and we reduce even that 10,000 is too much. We can maintain only 5,000. Our farmers are very poor. You cannot impose those kind of sanctions on them. Yeah, yeah, in fact, we ask ourselves how many villages or hamlets or towns that have uh, access to veterinary services. We can ask our question, uh, ourselves that question. I know I said member for Upper Fuladu West, then Brikama South. To well, um, thank you so much, um, Honorable Chair, for giving me the opportunity. For me, my, my concern is like, for example, like uh, if you are to make law, for example, how can you make a fine without imprisonment? Even though if the imprisonment is going to be a lighter sentence, let's say one month or even two months, but fine without imprisonment, I don't know whether that is possible. There are a lot of things that you can find without imprisonment. The member for Brikama South. Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. I think there is one fundamental thing we need to factor here. This was intensively debated during our engagement. Um, the drafters of this bill have an intent, and we have to look at that. I vividly remember in 2020, 2021, there was an FMD outbreak in this country. And some of the farmers are very reluctant to take their cattle for vaccinations. And we have to look at it. These are animals that we consume on a daily basis. And some of the diseases that affect them are zoonotic. It can also affect. So if such issues happen, I think maintaining these things and look at the magnitude in which it is done, we can apply. So for me, to be very much honest, even at our retreat, we agreed on maintaining these things, which is very, very important. But this also affects the life and livelihood of our own very selves. So we have to look at that one thing. Too. Member Fonyani, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Like when you look at animals, I think we are not only referring to cattle. So there are other animals that you know that even whereas you sell them, they are less than 10,000 or 5,000. So looking at the nature and the condition of farmers and access to uh, veterinary services, I'm suggesting for us to have a fine not less than 3,000 and not more than 5,000. Member for Tumana. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I think I concur with Honorable, Honorable Minister and, of course, what uh, Honorable Job is saying. Because most of these farmers, you consider it that it's not only cattle rearers. We, here we are talking about all the other ones. Uh, if you sell all the hearts of one person, maybe it will not cost you, it will not be more than even 10000 So if you charge that individual more than, more than something bigger than what, what he is having, of course, he or she cannot be able to afford that. So, and also the imprisonment, let us remove the imprisonment there. We are here to protect Gambians, and they too, they are Gambians. Let's protect them also. Thank you. That's my take. Because if you put in this imprisonment thing, you can imprison forests of them in a day. So, um, remember for Willie is. Yes, Chair, we, we heard the minister very well, but we are making law because if these people go to court and uh, they are fined and the person refuses to pay the fine, how do we deal with what, 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 what would the court do after that? So we must put in default, no matter whether it's going to be one month, I propose that we put in default one month imprisonment. To, this is for a deterrent. But if we just leave it there, the person can say, I'm not going to pay since if I don't pay, nothing will happen to me. There are always mechanisms that they can use to get things paid. They can even go and catch one and sell it, or two. So uh, the, um, uh, the member for Nyamina West, then Konya uh, Kansala. Okay, thank you very much, Chair. Um, just to, I am a member of the committee. I was at the retreat. Someone said that this is genuinely agreed at the retreat. Yes, but 
I was one of the members who was trying to bring down these charges. Yes, during the retreat. And I highlighted this. And some people were saying that I'm citing farmers so much because I'm rearing animals. That is not the case. We are making laws and we are making laws to help. And please take note. If you don't mind, you will make laws here that will hunt you back. Because tomorrow you also can own a cattle, you can own an animal. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, uh, Chair, rather. Yes, my, my suggestion uh, is this. In the area where you talk of fine, it says uh, a fine not less than I... Are we together? Yes, a fine not less than $500 and not more than 1500 That is my proposal. All right? Individual. That's my proposal. And where it says imprisonment for not less than uh, six months or not more than uh, 12 months, I suggest, as honorable members are saying, uh, an imprisonment not less than one week and not more than one month. These are farmers, and we are all farmers. So that is my suggestion. Yes, thank you. Honorable, honorable members, as it is, there are numerous uh, uh, proposals from members and the honorable minister. I just want them to reconcile the chair and the minister, then they tell us uh, what is their proposal so that we can vote. Honorable, honorable chair, I think the proposal made by the honorable minister and the one made by the member for Sabaksanga, seconded by honorable member for Nyani. They are good proposal. But what was also suggested by a member for Wooly is that to, uh, to add at least one month imprisonment yourself as a deterrent. Honorable Chair, also I, makes honorable, sense. honorable Chair, you are telling me all these proposals make sense. I said take one. Yes, we take, we take that, that of the Honorable Minister and that of the Honorable Minister, then we vote. Thank you. Honorable, the Honorable Minister, then we vote. Please. And honorable members, the honorable member for Okonomi, you can go there, three of you, you put up a proposal and give it to us. Because we don't want people to be jumping here and there with various proposals. Let's get one proposal. Chair, go and join your co-chair and the members. You, get, you give us one, then we vote on it. We have agreed that we vote on the proposal made by honorable minister. Okay. That's it. That's what I'm saying. It, it is proposed that clause... Oh. And I said I was going to give you. Maybe you can forgive me until next close. Please. Huh? Huh? No. Every other member, every other member have contribution. Lower Salum, Upper Salum, nominated member, Josuang, Sabasanjal, Tarinding, Sarah. I did Krem. not. The list goes on. <laughs> please, please, next close, I will give you people. Now, the proposal from the chairman is a fine of not more than $10,000 or imprisonment of not more than one month. Huh? For one, the lower one is $5,000. So it depends on the discretion of the court to decide what, 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 what amount to charge you. No, if this one, that means we are going to delete 5,000. It can be from $1 no. up to $10, 10,000. And imprisonment can be from one day to one month. Yeah. But, the minister, but the minister is proposing we delete imprisonment. Yes, yes. That's what is his proposal. Yes. Huh? That's okay, we delete imprisonment. The proposal is that what is going to, where we are going to insert. Honorable members, let me read the proposal. Order, 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 order. Please, order. please, please, please. No. Uh, just please. No, let me read the proposal first. No, 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 no. 
No. No, let me read. We're not reading. Care. I'll allow the chair. Oh, let me care. Oh, okay, he said, okay, allow him to say what you want to say. Wait, no. he's allowing me. No, no. Okay, thank you very much. You see? No, no, no. He, 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 oh, you are not allowing me. <laughs> no. Please. No, let me read the proposal no. first. Be on the same wavelength. No, let like me. Like Lyman Jason will say. Let me finish first. A person, the proposal from them is. Now, their proposal reads A person who contravenes subsection 1 commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine of not more than $10,000, full stop. No. Honorable Chair. Chair, Chair. Chair. Chair, yes. Yes, thank you very much. Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair. Please, please, order, please, order. Honorable Chair, thank you very much for giving me the floor. You see, we are making a law. And rest remember, we are all farmers. I can, I can, I can tell you, none of you here have more cattle than me, personally. No, don't, hey, don't, hey, I can I, tell you that. Me, me, me. I'm telling you. Me, me. But we are making a law. And in making a law, you have to cater for all aspects of society, all aspects, all possibilities. So let's look at why this fine, why the fine. The government, the, the veterinary service have a responsibility, but as a farmer, you also have a responsibility. And in deterring, making so that you be on your responsibility, these are the measures. But this doesn't necessarily mean we are going to pay a fine of 10,000 or you are going for imprisonment. Honestly, this is, this is the honest truth. This is an issue that we debated extensively during the, during the engagement. And I think with this fair proposal from the minister, I think it is definitely very, very fine. But again, you have to put a, a deterrent there. If the payment is not effected, if the payment is not done, what should be done? Very simple and easy. That's why we say not more than one month. It can be one day, two days, and fine. I think it suffice because let's look at the, let's look at somebody. I have my cattle. I know that there is an outbreak of disease. I know that my cattle are infected, huh? and I refuse. I, there are in, instances, there are scenarios where as cattle owners, the veterinary officer will be going around to do vaccination, and they will refuse. They will say, my cattle is not be vaccinated, and so and so. So let's look at all those possibilities, please. Chair, no. um, remember for Talimbing Kunja, there is a proposal, I will read it. Thank you, thank you very much, Chair. I think members, thank you very much, my Chair. Chair has uh, adequately addressed the, the issue. So we, are, uh, we are overlooking one important word in the clause, noticeable disease. Noticeable. You as a farmer, you have, a, you have your herd of cattle and you realize that this one is sick. Noticeable, if, if it's not, if you cannot know, it's noticeable. Allow me to talk, please. Noticeable disease. Not, not any, the, for those that are farmers, even if you're not a farmer, you go to a cattle, a cattle that is sick. If you see it, there are signs, my friend. You, you should not be acting as we are most sympathetic to farmers. We all do. Let's, let's see, we are making progressive laws here. If, Look at the, it's not about the, 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 the value of the cattle. It's the risk to the society as a whole. What potential is there for outbreak of, of those kind of diseases? How many cattle, and some of these diseases are transmissible to human beings. So, so it's neg negligent for, for a, a, a hard owner to see a, a, a noticeable disease in your and refuse to report it. I agree, I agree with the minister, you, you know, the, 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 the option of imprisonment should not be like a fine or imprisonment. It should be in default. Like honorable, I, I agree that it should be in default. The, the imprisonment should be removed. If you do not pay the fine, then the court should see how you should, they should keep you in there. But then it shouldn't be like the, the, the court should have you know, options to imprison you or sentence you. The, the imprisonment should be removed. Yeah. Um, sure. Member for San Mentoring. Yes, um, thank you very much, um, Chair, for giving me this opportunity. Chair, I think uh, when we are to make laws, we should make laws to the interests of um, the citizens. And of course, this should be good laws. Um, the, the, the imprisonment and, and the charges attached to um, the default, I think uh, we should really be serious about it in giving not, nothing less than five years, nothing less than 5,000, and one year imprisonment because farmers should not also default in their in their veterinary services how about 
if someone's cattle has sickness and you, you, you refuse to um, do the, 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 the veterinary services and you happen to slaughter that particular animal where people will buy it and use it and which can transfer disease to that person. I think these are things that we also Hon need to look Hon at. Honorable Thank members, you. as it is, I am seeing a debate between members that have farming communities and members who don't have farming communities. Now, Chair, 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 now, please. Yeah, Chair, I'll Chair, I'll come to you. I'll come to you, I said. Now, honorable members, honorable members, now what I'm going to do is, now there is one proposal from the member for Upper Salon, he submitted. I will read it, or I will allow um, the member for Joswang, the majority leader, my, I will allow the member of Upper Salon, minority, majority leader, then I read, I will read the proposal from Upper Salon, then we vote. Um, Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Member for Joshua. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Yeah. I think, Chair, we have to be very careful with when we are preparing laws. Do we consider our people behind? And number two, we are in, we have, did we consult them? Is there any accessibility? The accessibility, I mean, aspect of it should be looked at. The farmer over there, some of them are, they don't even know about veterinary. Exactly. They don't even know about veterinary. They, no, no, I'm coming, I'm coming. We are, we, we are, we are all in it. Don't, don't let us see as, 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 as we are the one affected. Somebody can be in Kanchungo, but they don't even, even hard to see veterinary. And in the case this happens, let's use the fine to 5,000, and if possible, if, and with, 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 with the follow-up, in case he's default, one of his cattle to be seized. To seize his cattle than, than I mean, say, in prison, to seize one of his cattle to be seized. Thank you. Um, I, I, I will go to minority leader and majority, but minority leader want me to read the proposal first. Let me read the proposal, then minority majority leader we vote. The proposal from the member for Upper Salom, he submitted, he submitted his proposal and reads, sub two, any person who contravenes subsection one commits an offense and is liable Minister, and is liable on conviction to a fine of not more than five thousand dollars. Yes. That's the proposal from Upper Salon. <laughs> now I will. Uh, now we, please, honourable members, that's the pro, that's the proposal we have. We have another proposal, but he changed. That's the chair in verbal, but. We are going to vote on this proposal after the minority and the majority leader. Minority leader. No, this is the only proposal. No, you know, early on there was proposal from the chair, but he changed. Okay. Yes. Now, now this, this is the proposal we are going to vote on. Yes, this is what we are going to vote on. The, the, the one submitted by the minister is regarding removal of the conviction conviction and the then, option and, of conviction and also minister's proposal hmm. is to be not more than 10000 full stop yes not more than 10000 and then to remove the aspect yes. of the and the, the one from upper salon is not more than 5000 and remove yeah. the other yeah. i think the fear of, uh, around the amount 10000 to some members it may appear as if that is the amount that is going to be fine, but that is the maximum fine that can be imposed. Excuse me, excuse me. I think when, when we are debating, we allow each other to express our view. And then if you want to comment, when you have the floor, you can equally do so. I think honorable chair, you need to address honorable member. This is not parliamentary. It's not parliamentary at all. I'm disappointed. Yeah, that I say, honorable care, you need to address order. honorable member. Order, please. Order, please. Honorable members, let us be guided by our standing orders. We maintain decorum and please, honorable member for my, uh, my uh, member for Bill Yes, on, as I said, the amount 10,000, that is still the maximum. And that may be based on the magnitude of the offense. And if you 
bring it down to five, we are saying that that should be the magnitude of the offense, mean maximum 5,000. And we cannot guarantee that all offenses should have that fine that we can rate it to be the maximum penalty that should be imposed. To me, let us not have that fear factor on the 10,000. It doesn't mean automatically that is what is going to be imposed on. But it will be there as a check based on the magnitude of the offense. Thank you, um, the honorable member. Um, there are two proposals. Uh, those thoughts who are with the member for Upper Salom is that giving the magistrate the discretion between zero to 10,000. They are of the view that if the magistrate chooses 7,000, 6,000, 8,000, 9,000, or 10, please, or 10,000. No, 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 please, order. Chief, order, please. They are of the opinion that the magistrate have the discretion, can choose to go to 6,000 or 7,000, and they are of the opinion that that's on the high side. That is why they are saying it should be from $0 to 5,000. That's their proposal. Those that also with the zero dollars to 10,000. Now, I am going to, as I said, uh, two proposals, the minister's proposal and the upper salo, because the Nyanija proposal here I have, have something, but he withdrew that one, because it's went off to imprisonment. So we will vote on these two. Before that, you know, I say I will come to the majority leader. I will allow the majority leader, then we will vote. Honorable Chair, can I propose to? Uh, thank you very much, Honorable um, Chair, for giving me the floor. Honorable Chair, I want us to understand that the bill here has a purpose to address. And for the fact that we try to address a certain menace in our society to meet international standard and also make sure our meat are fit for purpose, consumption. If a cattle rare or animal rare fails in the obligation to maintain the healthy and the well-being of his or our own animals, has a detriment repercussion. Notwithstanding, if you consume, you have to be the consumer, the amount of money you use to care yourself outweighs what you're asking. We are trying to address the situation now. Now, if you look at section, section uh, 26, you have compulsory vaccination of animal. That is there. The compulsory vaccination of animal is there. And if you default, there are penalties to that. Now, we are not only limiting to, to, to that, we are also saying that as a farmer, you have an obligation, making sure that, you see, these laws we are making it will enable our farmers to even export their meat outside because they are standard. They meet some health criteria. So now, I, I concur with the minister that let's make a caveat from one to 10,000. But of course, we fail to address one thing. How about if the person default? We have to address the component. So we must say that now, from the judge can vary from one to 10,000 in the event he or she defaulted, there should be, of course, imprisonment. We are trying to uh, uh, correct an attitude, a behavior here. Thank you. Uh, 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 you know, you know, early on, someone raised that issue. I said, I'm not sure the Attorney General also is here. Because sometimes, if there is no provision that provides for def in default of payment, uh, of, uh, in default provide for settling, maybe you can uh, be uh, uh, sent, you can be incarcerated. But I think it's a settled law or practice that they can as well probably confiscate one animal or so and sell it. Uh, yes. And uh, some members also talk about contagious diseases. If it is beyond that, it becomes a national uh, distinct. Now, you know, no matter member cable and for another, you know, earlier on, I said, after these two, then we will vote. So the next close, I will give you the floor. I'm waiting for you to give him the floor. I am just waiting. 
nominated member came along for for now. Your colleague said she is waiting for me to uh, give you the floor, and she is right. Please. She is right. If I give you the floor without her, she should, I am waiting. I will do she should take me to court. Now, honorable <laughs> members, honorable members, let's vote. There are two proposals. One, 5,000. Full stop. Not more than 5,000. The first one is 10,000. Full stop. No, you... That's maximum. That is fine. Honourable members, Minister is saying maximum of 5,000 is okay. Minister is saying maximum of 5,000 is okay. No, Minister Member Kebala, even if I want to give you the floor, now I'm afraid. No, no, I give a chance to him now. Allow him to say Please, something. Please, let's vote. Chair, my proposal was there. Now, I read my proposal. Please, don't use your mic like that. No, I have not seen your proposal. No, 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 no. No. If you, if you brought in proposal, maybe now. No. <clears throat> no. Now, now the proposal reads, any person who contravenes subsection 1 commit an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine of not more than $5,000. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. no. The ayes have it. No. Now, the propose, uh, it is proposed that clause 12, as amended, stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. no. The ayes have it. The eyes don't have it. That is only five, not more than five thousand. Full stop. <laughs> Class. Clause thirteen, sealing of infected premises. Clause thirteen, sealing of infected premises. Chair, do you have anything on clause 13? No, no, no proposal. It is proposed that clause 13, sealing of infected premises, stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Member for Pasalum. Clause 14, lifting of quarantine. Clause 14, lifting of quarantine. Chair, it is proposed that clause 14, lifting of quarantine stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Clause 15, declaration of protection zone. Clause 15, Chair, declaration of protection zone. It is proposed yeah. that clause 15, declaration of protection zone stands part of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those not in favor, please say no. That is have it. Clause 16, declaration of disease-free area or zone. I don't have... Uh, no proposal for... for I that don't one. have that page. My page is blank on that. Oh. Yes. Yeah, let me use your... That is close what? 16. Honorable well, no, no proposal. Okay, close 16. Declaration of disease free area or zone. It is clause 17. Disinfection measures. Clause 17, Chair. Yes, Honorable Minister. Disinfection have of measures. Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, um, Chair. 17.2. A person who contravenes, let's say, let's say starts with the offense. That is 17.1 says. A person shall disinfect premises, including buildings and facilities, equipment and vehicle, in a manner prescribed in the regulations and under the supervision of an authorized officer. 17.2 says, a person who contravenes subsection 1 
commits an offence and is liable on conviction to a fine of not less than $25,000 and not more than $50,000 or imprisonment for not less than six months and for not more than 12 months or both. Honourable uh, Minister, it is not... 25, it's 20,000. 20,000, sorry. What? Minimum of 20, maximum of 50. What is it? Are you, because they said you have something here. What, yes. What is that? It's to remove the imprisonment. Okay. The Honorable Minister's proposal is to remove imprisonment and for it to end at not more than $50,000 in full stop. Honorable Kike agreed. You can proceed. It is proposed that Clause 17. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, member for Sabah Sanjal. Yes. Uh, I don't get that clear. It says, let's, let's look at one first together. A person shall disinfect premises, including buildings and facilities, equipment and vehicles, in the manner prescribed in regulations and under the supervision of an authorized officer. So it means if I have an animal that is infected. It is mandatory for me to dis disinfect the area. That is my understanding of this one. It is mandatory that I have to disinfect that area. And failing to do so, I am liable to a particular fine. Now, this will bring me back to my, my argument before. This is somebody who have only one good. Allow me to come. Please, honorable members, please. Now. A she goat is less than five thousand dollars, and now that she goat is infected. Now you are creating a law to tell me that if I did not did not disinfect that area, and how much is the disinfect the area, those houses, and even the houses? How much is the in, uh, that's, that? How much does that disinfection um, um, substance cost me? to no. disinfect that area. And if I fail to do that, you said um, I should be paying $20,000. When the goat itself is less than $20,000, that is too much. That is just too much. Let us make a law that, that fits our society, my brothers. If you go to the provinces, is this very rare you, have, you see a veterinary officer daily who will be able to come and supervise those kind of issues. So if we are making laws, we have to make laws that will fit our society. We cannot put this load on our farmers. It's practically impossible. Yes. Can I talk? I want to reply to Sabah Sanjali. No, in fact, you will not come. Because you are, you are out of order. You want I raise? Can I bring my phone yes, down? Let me how can you me. just use your mic like that, as if you are the appointed uh, replier to reply to them? Member for Nyamina West. Thank you very much, Chair. I think the last time also I li I'm in line with Sabak Sanjal. The last time I said it here, when we are discussing on uh, birth registration, you give an officer all the facilities to go around and monitor, and now you are putting all the tax back to the farmer when nothing is given to the farmer to monitor. Officers are given vehicles, they are given motorbikes, they are given fuel and allowances to monitor all these things. And now you are putting the burden back to the farmer. Instead of saying that if the, if the officer didn't monitor and didn't quarantine and the officer oh, definitely is a burden on the farmer, we need to look at this properly. It is the officer that should be taxed to do this job not the farmer instead. Honorable members, um, the legal people here, uh, order, order, the member for Fony, Fony, Fony Jarrell, you said you want to reply to Sabah Sanjal, I will give you the floor, but order, I want to make something, order, member for Opanyomi.
Open your mommy. Open your mommy. No. Order. Director of director. Please. Majority leader. Order. Director. Director. Care. Mr. Kaba. Care. Care. What I want to say here. No, no, no. I haven't given the floor yet. Uh, you said for Nijaro. Just I will come. Honorable members, please. Order. Open your mommy. I want to say this. Uh, minister, please pay attention to this. Fony Jarol, if you don't stop, I will ask you to go back to your seat. Then you go back to your seat. Now, this one I want to ask the minister. Mr. Kaba, please take your seat, sir. I want to ask the minister. This one is instructing the farmer in the event of an infected animal. You know, other members talk about a contagious disease it can be harmful to our health in exporting. When it reaches to that level, it becomes a national catastrophe. And then other policies, laws, and or intervention will take its course. If a farmer who have probably, let's say, five goats, or three goats, or two goats, and one of his God or sheep is infected, and he will be expected to disinfect those houses and everything. Where is he going to get the disinfectants? How? How? Do we, do they have also, you see, Please order, order. That's what I'm, I, I asked the minister. When the minister responds, we'll allow for the general the majority leader. The minister will respond, then for the general will respond to Sebastian Jarrell, then the majority leader. Th thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. I, I think your question is, if a premises or a vehicle that has carried an infected animal is identified. As it stands now, and even in this new law, the farmer is the one with the burden for disinfection. The farmer is the one required to disinfect his premises. And that is why I am with the opinion, given the economic status of our farmers, that um, yes, the fine is something that we should look at, but for imprisonment, I have just been consulted with justice. Is the way it's written here, the magistrate has the option to not even give you a fine. He can go straight and give you imprisonment. So the language I would even recommend is to say in default, exactly. at least a minimum to make it to, to, to make it criminal, to a fine of certain amount in default then put imprisonment. Now, Honorable Minister. Yes. You see, Honorable Members, we are making laws, yes. and we want to deter or want to minimize the, the rate in the event there is infection. Now, before boarding a responsible government, before putting the burden of disinfecting houses and premises on farmers, why don't we put it on government? Exactly. Once government realizes there is disease or infectious disease around that area, is the veterinary officer or the Ministry of Agriculture with the health should rush in and take responsibility to, 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 to avert national catastrophe or spread of those things to go and, uh, and inject or whatever, give medication to those livestock and disinfect the area. That's what they should do. Not to say the farmer. Mr. Chief, can I come in? Can I come in? Yeah, Minister. Yeah, actually, Honorable Deputy Speaker and Chairman, I think I agree with you. 